In CNC machining, whether it's wood or metal, rigidity is king. And so that's what I'm going to focus on today. Before I get into the details of this episode, it's been a while since I've had an episode. Things have been really busy at work, and then they were really busy at home. And so things just got away from me. Hopefully now I'm back on track and we'll be able to do videos more frequently. This video is a little bit different from my other videos, but it does trace back to something I did about a year ago on this machine. So let me explain what I'm going to do to this machine, and then let's get at it. This is my Yeti SmartBench CNC router that I've used for some of my woodworking projects and I have quite a few more woodworking projects coming up. I need to build some shelving and cabinets for in the house. One of the things I'm going to show you about this is how it's built and then I'm going to make some changes to it. So right now I've got a piece of plywood on top of there, on top of a spoil board and it has some holes cut out from the last job I did. So the way this works is that there are some rollers on the bottom here. You can probably just barely see this roller. And they're all the way across. What they do is they push up on the underside of the spoil board. So when you see that I move it over, you can see how it's pushing it up. But you probably also noticed a little bit of uh, unevenness in its movement, like right here. That's where it's going over some sections that I previously cut. And so, while this system works reasonably well, I saw a post on Facebook about how to build a frame that is rigid underneath to hold the spoil board. And theoretically, that should give me even better accuracy. I'm going to take the uh, plywood and spoil board off and then give you an idea of what it looks like without those on. This is a smart bench without the spoil board on top. And you can see that there's just a small area in the middle that uh, provides support. I think it's about uh, two feet wide, something like that. And so the rest of the support is just provided by the rollers that are underneath here. So the idea is I'm gonna build a frame on here. Now the frame will be one inch tall and come most of the way out. That means I'm going to be losing a little bit of the Z height that I can have, but that shouldn't be an issue because none of the things that I plan to work on are going to use anywhere close to the available Z height. So I'm now going to start uh, assembling the frame and I'll come back uh, and explain the frame after I've assembled it. These are all the parts that I ordered. These are aluminum struts. I have one by one inch struts here and I have one by two inch struts here. And the idea is that these will be mounted like so and basically resist the bending of the plywood. And then the one by two, one by ones are going to connect these together going this direction. I have all the connectors for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start assembling it. As you may have guessed, I don't have a lot of room in my garage, uh, so it's kind of hard to film things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble it and then show it to you after I've finished assembling it. So most of the connections are pretty straightforward, like I'm gonna use this to connect the wide pieces to this piece at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm gonna use these pieces uh, connected in the rail here with some T-nuts to hold these into place. Or I should say the cross pieces. Now, there is one set of connections that is different, which is the end-to-end. -end. So these pieces that I, I purchased were too short. Uh, and so I got pieces that were half the right length. And then they're joined together with uh, these bars here. And so the idea is you slide one of these bars in there, you slide it in there, like so. And then you can take a screwdriver and just uh, tighten them up. I'll put in four of these, and then all four together will hold them in place. Okay, so then these just uh, you know, snug up. and. Of course, this is not going to work correctly because I only put in one of them. I'll have to put in all four. But uh, it gives you an idea of what it's like. Even with just one in, let me finish tightening this. You can see it's, it's pretty stiff. So once I put all four in, it should be very, very solid. These are the rollers that the spoil board normally runs on when you don't have the solid frame. So what I want to do is to move this 
And uh, there's a little uh, plastic piece that keeps it from sliding. Now I can pull it out because the type of nut it uses is the type that is, can be inserted from above. But the problem I'm having is that I have this frame too far this direction. So I'm going to need to loosen the connection to the frame so I can pull this up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take out these screws here by taking out the screw that attaches to this rail right here. I won't change the position at all. And that will allow me to lift this up. Then I'll do that to the other one, which is back there, and I should be able to lift this up enough to squeeze it under. Now you can see this will lift up a little bit, not very much. Uh, hopefully it will be enough. And yes, it was enough. So now I can tighten that in place. You may not be able to see that very well, but it's uh, directly underneath the beam. And so that now that means that these rollers will roll underneath this beam, just in case uh, there's any sag, which I don't think there will. This will make sure that it picks that up. This gives you a better idea of how the frame is built. You can see I've got the wider one by two pieces that are going across, and then I have the one by one pieces which are tying these one by twos together. And then I have these 90 degree brackets here that are holding the one by twos to the base or the, the table of the smart bench. And then over here, you can see I have the corner brackets and you can see it back in the, the corner right there. You can also see how the bracket is tied together. So this is now a very stiff structure. I'm gonna put the spoil board and then that piece of plywood I had on before back on here and see how it uh, behaves differently. But from what I've read, even if it doesn't, if it moves back and forth like it did before, it's still going to get better Z accuracy than just riding with the rollers underneath the spoil board. This is the board or this remainder of the board that I rolled over before and it caused it to kind of tilt this way. So I'm going to roll over this again. And what you probably noticed is, is that it was super smooth and it did not cause it to tilt a rock at all. So that seems to be a pretty good indication that this is going to give me a much more rigid setup, which when you're dealing with, dealing with CNC machining, rigidity is always good. There are some other upgrades and improvements I want to make to this machine. I want to think about it uh, some more and then try some things out. But as an example, it is possible to do vertical, you know, have pieces in vertically. So I'm thinking about putting a clamping system into here that will allow me to do that. And I mean, either uh, connect it here or back there, I haven't decided yet. Uh, and that would allow me to do things like dovetails, box joints, etc., cetera, uh, with the CNC machine, which I think would be really cool. I also need to get some more experience with this now that it's more rigid, but from what I've heard, it should be a lot more precise in the Z. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below if you have any ideas, particularly on other improvements I can make to this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.